Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. Well, we are on a journey, the journey of generosity in our series right now. And what a great way to remember God's generosity today than take communion. Such a great reflection of what he's done for us. Last week, I talked about how God is generous and Jesus was God's greatest expression of generosity towards us and that generosity flows from a heart that has been changed by Jesus. One of the main things I want you to take away from this series is is that generosity shouldn't be a burden. It should actually be a natural reflex to the Christian's life because it's a characteristic of Jesus in you. You can't live the Christian life. I can't live the Christian life without Jesus in me. And so God gives you Jesus to do all that he asks you to do. And so it won't be based off of works or law. You won't have to do these things because of the law. You will do them because of his love and him dwelling in you. I think that's just so important that we understand that. And I believe, as I said last week, that we want to be generous. Sometimes we just need help getting there. And the Word of God has tons of advice on how to manage our finances and how to even view money. And I'm going to bring one today that's actually pretty interesting. But before I do that, I want to pray for some people in this room today. Because after last week's message, some things came to light about people's situation in their lives. And I don't want us to think that um, we're going to ignore these people or you haven't been there or, or we're not there. And that is those who are going through financial struggles right now. They are real. Am I not? Am I right or what? I mean, they are real. It could be medical things. It could be an accident. It could be that uh, we had a couple people in our church where a tree fell on their house Um, these these things come out of nowhere, right? Life will throw these curveballs at you and they're out of your control and it can set you back financially. And some of you may be feeling super overwhelmed right now with the amount of debt or the amount of things that you need to pay still in your life. And so can we just, can we take a moment to pray? Because I believe God will get you through. God will give you peace. God will help you and he'll give you wisdom on how to handle this. Even today's message may help you. Um, today's message is real. I'm just going to give you a warning. It's, it, it cuts deep, okay? And it cuts deep here first, me, all right? But I don't want anyone to feel like, you know, discouraged um, going into this message. God will help you get out of that hole and whatever you're feeling. Amen? God, we come to you today for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are feeling overwhelmed by their financial burdens and struggles. Lord, show yourself as Jehovah Jireh, our provider. God, help our hearts, help our mindsets. Lord, help our habits, our spending, whatever it may be, God. Get them in order. Help us, Lord. And God, I pray that you would work a supernatural miracle in these situations where it's needed. Lord, God, pray you provide financially, Lord. And God, you see every heart, you see every situation And what has happened particularly, we are not to judge those situations. Lord, you know exactly what needs to take place. So God, I pray for you to intervene and you to help give them peace. May they trust in you during this season. It is not easy, but may they trust in you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. I want to go cut deep here a little bit, and the reason why is because I want to talk about the heart of generosity. I'm talking about the foundations of why we would even be generous and how we can be generous, because last week was that God is generous, that's how we can be generous, Uh, and that could be anything to the work of the ministry, it could be to helping people in need around you that you know of, but here's the thing, when we get the blessings of God, when we have God's resources, God has given us all the things that we have, we have to be good stewards of what he's given us. We learned last week that God gave Adam and Eve the whole planet to take care of and to govern and rule. And then guess what happened? Sin came in and messed it all up. 
but God is restoring us back to Eden, back to wholeness through Jesus Christ. And that's why I use the example of Zacchaeus and how Zacchaeus was a little bit of a crook, taking more money than he should from people because of taxes. And he wants, to, he wants to hang out with Jesus. He wants to see Jesus one day. And he's a shorter gentleman. So he climbs a tree to see Jesus. And Jesus sees him. And he says, come on over. Or I'm going to come on over. This is kind of funny. Jesus invites himself over. And Jesus goes, I'm coming to your house. And, and we're going we're gonna to have food together. And something took place in that interaction that day where it changed Zacchaeus' heart, and he told Jesus that I will pay back, I will give to the poor, and I will pay back four times everything I stole from people. Now, obviously, something changed there in his life, right? Because it was a heart change. I believe in an important place for us to begin stewarding our finances needs to be in our hearts. Because when we steward our hearts well, we will manage our money well. Matthew 6, 19 says, don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. A lot of people will say, follow the trail of our spending and we'll often find our hearts. You can typically look at your bank account and see where money goes and you can know what matters to you, which is quite all right. What we see in this scripture is that if we store up treasures here on earth, they're going to fade and be destroyed. They're going to wither away. But if we use what God has given us to store up treasures in heaven, eternity, then it will never be destroyed. It will not waste away. And Jesus says, wherever your treasure is, there you will find your heart. And typically, wherever we put a lot of our resources and money into and time into is where you're going to see what your heart thinks is important and matters and values the most. That's what Jesus is trying to teach there. Now, Proverbs 4.23, just to show you another reason why stewardship has to do with the heart, is Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Wow. Guard your heart because everything you do flows from your heart. Decisions, thoughts, actions, whatever it is, flows from the inner life, the core of your being. The reason why God gives us his spirit, the reason why Zacchaeus would never change and, and be a generous person is because he didn't have Jesus in his life. His heart was corrupted and needed work to be done. And once Jesus came in, the proper flow was set up. Now, we have Jesus in us as believers. He gives us his spirit at salvation and changes our hearts. God knows it's important that if we're going to live a life that honors and lives for him and loves him, he's got to change us on the inside out, in other words. Galatians 5, 16 says, So I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. So in other words, without Jesus in us, without his Holy Spirit, we would just give in to whatever we want to do. We would give in to every desire that we have. But at salvation, the Holy Spirit comes in us, and this is what happens. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. If it wasn't for the Holy Spirit in us, we would just do whatever we want. Whatever we want. And guess what that affects? Our wallets and our bank accounts. Luke 6, 45, another reason why the heart is so important. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. So your heart is a place where you can store everything you believe, everything you think is important. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. 
What you say flows from what is in your heart. So it obviously matters to Jesus what is in our hearts. And the reason why Jesus is in our hearts and lives in us is so that Jesus will come out of us. So God knows the importance of changing your inner life. And you know what's interesting? What we're hearing right now is living a generous life is more spiritual than we thought, isn't it? It's a spiritual battle sometimes. The whole idea here is, is that we want to be generous, but we have to understand that there's some things that are gonna sabotage your generosity. And if we're not careful, one of them is our heart. One of them is our heart. Uh, let me give you an example of what I mean. All right? Uh, now, Brother James Collins mentioned this in our marriage conference uh, last weekend. It was almost like he was reading my notes. It was kind of funny. We joked about it. But here's the thing. How many of you have kind of felt this way? If I could just make $50,000, I could be more generous. So God bless it. Wow, he, you know, you get that raise and you get the promotion or maybe, you know, you get a little side gig going on, right? And you get to 50 grand. But guess what it's not? It's not enough. So you're like, yeah, man, you know what? If I could just get to 60 grand, if I could just make $60,000, that would be enough to, you know, to do this and to live this and do some extra vacations and things like that. So you get to 60 grand, praise God. But guess what? It's not, say it out loud. It just seems like it's never enough. So you get to 60,000 and, you know, you're doing your thing. And, and next thing you know, you get blessed and you get to $70,000. And you're like, man, I could do it. I, wow, this is great. But here's the thing. If your heart still needs some serious work done, it will never be, am I right or am I wrong? It will never be enough. You know why? Our hearts have holes in them, like our bank accounts. They drain. There's some weak spots in our hearts that if we're not careful, if we don't address them, it doesn't matter how much you make. Why is it that celebrities and athletes can make millions of dollars and then file bankruptcy. Why is that? Because there's some holes in their hearts. There's some things that need some patching up. And so God knows that if he can change your heart, he will change every area of your financial situation. That's how, this is so important today, that if you're going through some things financially, that you let God seek your heart and work on it today. So I'm going to give you some thoughts to think about of things that can sabotage your financial planning. And let me explain these and, and give you examples. And, and let me just put this out there. I'm preaching to myself. In fact, this list is because of my own life of things that I caught my heart, you know, wanting to, to get into. And I was like, nope, I can't let that rule my life because the Holy Spirit lives in me and God is teaching me how to manage my own life. If I can steward my heart, I can steward everything else. So number one, guard your heart, right? That's what we learned. Guard against, against emptiness. Guard against emptiness. Our hearts are like endless pits that are never satisfied. But don't just take my word for it. Proverbs 27, 20 says, just as death and destruction are never satisfied, it's pretty gloomy, so human desire is never satisfied. Your desires are never satisfied. And by the way, neither are our stomachs physically, right? That's why we keep getting hungry. Some of you may be hungry right now. Human desire is never satisfied. God knows that. God knows that. That's why he's eternal, because he will never stop flowing into your life. Amen. That's why Jesus is everything and is more than enough, and he will continue to flow in your life. Jesus fills us and teaches us to be contributors instead of just consumers. See, we're naturally consumers. We're naturally always consuming because we're 
empty. And until Jesus comes in and fills up every crevice of our lives and our hearts, we will always struggle with that feeling. So here's the next one to think about. Guard against greed and coveting. And Jesus actually teaches us to be content and grateful. But you know what can sabotage your generosity, and especially your financial stewardship and then your generosity? Is greed, the want of more, and even coveting what other people have. The whole keeping up with the Joneses thing, right? I want to make something clear because I failed to do this in the first service. But sometimes we'll look at other people's things and go, man, I want, I want that. And I'll, you know, I want the pool. I want the car. I want the house. I want their life. And the reality is they're not always that happy. And in fact, they're, they're probably in debt too. But here's the thing. Not everyone's in debt when they have a bunch of stuff. They just have taken care of their finances. So we got to be careful that we don't judge either. Because people may have their finances in order, and that's why they're able to live the life they're living, right? Just because someone's living that life doesn't mean that is your life. Coveting is dangerous because it makes you want something of this world versus want something of God. Because our eyes, if they get off of Jesus, if Jesus isn't enough, and now we want these other things, now we got to look for places in our bank account. Or what I've seen is, is we take extra jobs on just to get those things. And guess who suffers for it? Our marriage and our kids. Because we're not around each other. One of the biggest issues I have found with parenting and helping parents is we're so busy, we can't even lead our kids in the right direction because we're not even around them long enough to do it. So not only are you sabotaging your financial situation, you start to sabotage your family because of greed and coveting more things. And there's an answer to this. It's called contentment. 1 Timothy chapter 6 says this in verse 6. Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. Wow. Wow. Godliness, so being holy and pure, and then being content is what? Great wealth. There's a reason why, because if you're content, we may not be wasting all of our money. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world, and we can't take anything with us when we leave it. Do you know any dead people spending all their money? So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. There's a trap in having more, isn't there? For the love of money, not just money, but the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Aren't we seeing that in our world? And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Because here's the thing, with your affection from God to money or riches, now your attention is off of God. And so it's simple. We begin to go down a path of destruction. Paul goes on to tell Timothy this, because he's teaching his young apprentice these things, and he says this, and he's not, he's not bashing rich people. He's instead saying, teach the rich to not trust in their wealth. This is what he says. Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God, who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. By doing this, they will be storing up their treasure as a good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life. So there you have it again. To use your wealth to be generous and bless others instead of relying on your wealth and keeping it only for your own life and, the, and the tracing the riches. Go to Philippians 4 if you have your Bible open. I don't have this on the screen. Philippians chapter 4 Verse 10, Paul talks to the church and he's thanking them for their gifts of generosity. 
And this is what he says. He's going to talk about contentment as well. How I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you have always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. Wouldn't that be awesome to have that? That's the the goal, to be happy with what we have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I've learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. You ready for this verse? The one that's usually taken out of context. For I can do everything or all things through Christ who gives me strength. He wasn't talking about winning a football game, was he? (laughs) Which is okay. It's true. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. You know what this was about? This was about living content. I can do it because Christ in me, in other words. I can do this. I don't need all that stuff. Jesus is my satisfaction. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can be happy with a lot. I can be happy with a little, so I don't need more and more and more. And then I get myself in trouble. Even so, this is what he says, even so you have done well to share with me in my present difficulty. He's in prison writing this. As you know, you Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought you the good news and then traveled on from Macedonia. No other church did this. And just, I'm gonna take a pause Man, this church is so generous. Thank you so much for your generosity. We have seen a generosity pour out in the past week with all of our food pantry things and and the gifts towards our live streaming um, services and the experience there. We had some complications with it and we're gonna continue to fix it up. But thank you for your generosity. I sent it out in our church email this week. We are so grateful to be part of this church. You guys are amazing. Even when I was in Thessalonica, he says, you sent help more than once. I don't say this because I want a gift from you. Rather, I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. At the moment, I have all I need and more. I am generously supplied with the gifts you sent me with Epaphroditus. They are a sweet-smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. And this same God who takes care of me, I love this verse, will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Because they gave, they're gonna experience the riches and provision of God. That's so cool. So guard against greed and coveting by being content. You ready for this? One of the ways you build contentment in your life is gratitude. Gratitude. We like to teach our kids when we pray and to take inventory of all that we have. So what we do is we, we pray for everything we have. We, we, our prayers are dominated by thanksgiving. God, we thank you for this house. God, we thank you for our cars. We thank you for the food. We thank you for the bed. We thank you for the air conditioning. We think, I, there was a, a young a little boy who went to like a two and a half minute video on this online. It was so cute. Just thanking God for light switches and everything. Thank, wow, what kind of gratitude is that? Thank you, God, for a light switch. That's amazing. Go through that list with your kids. You know what? You yourself, be thankful every day, and guess what's going to happen? You're going to realize you have all you need. Because here's what happens. Gratitude turns the focus of your desires for more onto enjoying what you already have. This is going to help save some money this Christmas. Man, there's new TVs. By the way... So we have like streaming. We got rid of cable to save money on the $38 fees every month. And so we've been, we have, we've been cable free for about two or three years now. And we just use like internet. And so we stream our stuff. And I was watching news the other day and um, all of a sudden I have a craving for everything. A new car, pizza. And I'm like, where is this coming from? And I realized it's because I was watching commercials again. We don't watch commercials. We don't see them because we, we usually go, you know, to our video, like Amazon Prime or, you know, Disney, whatever, and watch with the kids. And they don't have advertisements. Isn't that crazy, though? That the world knows what, I mean, advertisers know what they're doing. Companies know what they're doing. To get your attention, you need this. You deserve this. You should have this. Look out. Because they've done work and studies to know how to appeal to your heart. So guard your heart. 
Instead, sit around going, you know what? I like my 2014 Honda Accord. I like that. Thank God for that. Here's another one. Guard against image and appearance. Now, I said I was going to cut a little deep. This is what I mean. I'm not saying don't be presentable. I'm not saying, you know, don't have nice clothes and all that. But your heart motive, our hearts, my heart, do I want to fit the, you know, the Jones image again? Do I want to fit that image? Do I want to appear like I have it all together? Do I want to appear like I'm super important? Or I want to spend money on every single brand new thing that comes out, right? You know what I'm saying? Hey, I found some nice shirts at Walmart. There is nothing wrong with Walmart. I, am I, actually, I might be wearing a Walmart shirt. No, no judging if you shop at Walmart. My kids grow so fast, I'll shop at Goodwill if I have to. Make sure you test it, smell it, you know, things like that. But, but look, I mean, you know what I'm saying though? Like that stuff can sabotage your financial status and your financial stewardship. And again, we're talking about the journey to get in gen- to generosity. So far, all these things can rob your bank account. I said rob. Yes, I did. It can drain your bank account. So look out for the image and appearance of having to have all the new stuff. Listen, let me tell you something. Let me encourage you with something. When you're adopted into the family of God, you've inherited riches beyond your comprehension. And one day you'll be receiving those riches and you're going to be super happy. Guard against fear and doubt. Proverbs eleven twenty one says, trust in your money and down you go. But the godly flourish like leaves in spring. Trusting in your money is not the way to go. God is the source of everything. Our trust in God is directly connected to how we steward our finances. Don't be afraid. Don't doubt God's provision. God is so generous. He never runs out. Never runs out. Let me keep moving. Guard against brokenness. This is, see, see Zacchaeus, his heart was broken. What, what kind of brokenness do we have? Like addictions to things. Those are expensive, aren't they? I told my wife not too long ago, broken hearts are expensive. Did you know that? Addictions to things are expenses, are expensive. Dealing with stress, pain, and emotions the wrong way, trying to buy our feelings and help us feel better, trying to, if we're addicted to alcohol or food or even gambling, that is not at all the plan that God has in his word. Our hearts can be very expensive if we don't guard and let Jesus fix them. And lastly, remember I told you I was getting real, wasn't I? Because we got to look for our, our hearts and be careful. And lastly, guard against selfishness. The selfishness can be so, so wrong and sabotage generosity. One of my uh, favorite kids' movies was uh, Finding Nemo. And I thought it was genius. When they, when those seagulls said, what do they say? Mine, mine. And I just, I couldn't stop laughing. My kids are probably like, what is wrong with this guy? But isn't that what they're like on the beach? Like they are fighting over that one fry. And then they fly away. It was my fry. And they fly away and they fighting over that, fl- that fry. Wow, that's a tongue tire. Fly fry. And it's like, mine, mine. I just thought that was genius. Oh, my goodness. Here's what Proverbs 11 says, verse 24 through 25. Give freely and become more wealthy. Huh. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. So... The Bible is actually not against frugality and being frugal. The Bible is against being stingy. 
Be frugal, but not stingy. There's a difference. We can be frugal in such a way that we can actually be generous because we have our finances in order. You've probably been wondering, what in the world is this science project up here on the stage? That's what it looks like, actually. And let me, uh, I just realized I didn't have this set up right. So I did test this out to make sure it worked. We'll see how it goes. I'm probably going to use some of this next week as well. And I hope this is a big enough pan to hold what we're going to do. But this is a life. And by the way, how many know that you're going to have bills, okay? You're going to have a mortgage. That's the one debt you probably are allowed to have, correct? And then you got to pay for insurance. You got to pay for gas. You got to pay for utility. So all that stuff really does come into play. You have to do that. But what I did was I poked some extra holes in here to, to show you, to illustrate a heart that needs to be fixed still. Some broken areas in our hearts that can drain. And here's the thing. When I was testing it, it actually had a hard time filling up because the water was leaving so fast. So let's, let's try this out. Let's see if I don't make a mess of myself here. This is money. This is the, the blessings. By the way, you know that all things belong to God, correct? So God has gifted us with our resources. He's given us the energy and the ability. Now, this is I put more than a gallon in this pitcher, and we're having a hard time getting it to the top here. And it's just, it's just not going to make it to the top at all. Right now, it's draining out. Because there's some broken areas where we'll try to buy our happiness or try to buy an image. Maybe we just struggle with stinginess. And the Bible says... If you're not generous, you'll lose everything. Just scripture. And what we see is <clears throat> some work needs to be done in this person's life. But what's really, what's really interesting is, is we want to be able to be giving and generous. And this would be like a generous cup. But by the time I can even have enough, this might be what I give or have available to help people. And so God, God's, God is so good because God gives us Jesus to fix us up, to help us so that we can be a generous giver and helper for others needs. And so this is what he does. This is Jesus right here, taping us up fixing us up so we can be more generous in our giving. Now, this is where it might get a little messy. We'll see. But Jesus comes in your life, and guess what, though? I left, I left some holes in there because we're still going to have that mortgage, right? Hey, it's awesome. If you got to that place where you could pay cash for your house, praise God. Not me. I didn't get there. <laughs> So there's still a hole or two. You got insurance. You have utilities. You have groceries. So we're still going to have some draining, but the reality is, look how much more we have. Be able to receive or be able to give. You know what Jesus wants to do? Jesus wants to be your everything. Jesus wants to heal any brokenness you've experienced in your life. So the question is, is how do we steward our our hearts? We look to Jesus for a truly fulfilling life. We look to Jesus for a truly fulfilling life. I found peace when I found Jesus. I found joy. I found security. I found that everything I would ever really need is in Jesus because I know that this world isn't everything. This world is temporary and that my heart needs to be guarded. The second thing we do is we put God over everything. You've ever heard of it? God over money, 
God over everything. Keep God first. Psalm 24, 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all its people, belong to him. And Matthew 6, 24 says, No one can serve two masters. For you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. Wow. So, one of the ways we guard our hearts is to keep God first. And I'll talk more about that next week. But lastly, we store into the kingdom of God. Give to God's work. One of the best decisions I made was to give my first, first fruits to God and all the priorities of my life worked out better. Everything fell into proper position and place and priorities in my life. So today, I made the case that our hearts need stewarding in order to steward our finances. And who would have thought that our hearts could affect or sabotage our finances and our ability to be generous? And we know that Jesus changes our hearts so we can live like him. I want to pray for us. If there's any area... Oh, wow, this is really filling up. <laughs> hey, someone, someone pay off your debt and your mortgage already so we can patch this up. If there's any area that you need, I just want to ask you to look to Jesus today, to put God first in your life. He'll take care of you. Trust him. Be careful about storing up everything here on earth that you're unable to give to those in need, to give to the work of a ministry. But I'm telling you right now, this, this is so important. This is another step in the journey of being generous. To let God fix you and to change your heart from the inside so that you will use the resources he's given you to bring him glory more than anything else. Amen? Let me stand together. Oh, you know what? Let's stay seated because Dorothy's coming back out. Dorothy's going to come out. Why don't we pray right now? I wrote a prayer down. I'm going to read it. I want to read this prayer for us. And if you need a transformation in your heart so that Jesus is enough, I want you to pray this. God, transform our hearts so we will be good stewards with our lives and our resources. Help us to be grateful recipients of your provision and generosity. Help us guard our hearts so we can be vessels of generosity. Show us areas in our hearts that we need to be healed and patched up. Show us where we are being wasteful. We choose to lean into Jesus instead of the things to make us happy. We choose to rely on you for our joy and security, not the things of this world. We will be careful to be good stewards of what you have given us so we can be generous and show the world the generosity of your kingdom. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for healing our hearts, patching up those hurts and those holes so that we can look to Jesus as more than enough. We give you all the glory and praise for all that you've given us, the debt you paid for our sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God.